the rank tracker beta plugin, the plugin that lets you track your rank in the SEO positions for Google or Bing when you're searching for your website. So this is part of Scrapebox. It's one of the premium plugins. Of course, if you don't have Scrapebox, you can hop over to scrapebox.com and roll down and grab it before the deal ends down here. And then you wanna head over to scrapeboxtips.com and pop in your name and email so I can give you free tips and tutorials and guides and teach you how to make money with Scrapebox or checklists. Just lots of great resources that's all free for Scrapebox. And so if you already have the plugin, it is also part of the Rank Tracker plugin here. So when you get the Rank Tracker plugin, you get the beta with it. Now, the old Rank Tracker plugin will probably be replaced with the beta because Google made a new update in January 2025 and required JavaScript, and so the old Rank Tracker doesn't work. So I'm sure they're gonna replace it with the beta at some point, but anyways, right now it's called the beta. By the time you see this video, it may or may not be, but it's you get both of them, right? So if you have the Rank Tracker plugin, anything that says Rank Tracker, whether it's the original or the beta, whatever, and same moving forward, you get it, right? So you can go to show available plugins, get the rank tracker and get the beta and you can install them. If you don't have them, you can invest in them. They are an additional investment and that link will pop up right down here. And same, once you have it, they activate it in 12 hours or less. Go back up here to the plugins menu and then click on it and install it down here. I'm gonna focus on the beta today because it is the new one that works with the update. So we're just gonna pop that there and load it up and we will see this. So. Not a whole lot of menu options at the top, file and exit, and scheduler, the scheduler we'll talk about in a minute, but it allows you basically to schedule actions. So let's say you have your website or your client's websites, right? And you wanna check where the rank is every single day and kind of get a rolling report over time to see you know, where it is trending at, you can do that, right? And so the way you do that is you schedule it maybe to run while you're asleep, for example, or whatever, that's what scheduler is. So we first need to make a project. I don't have any projects projects in here, it's new, right? So let's make a project. We're gonna click on projects and then we can just call this, I'm gonna call it scrape box, right? And we're going to put in, um, I'm just gonna grab the scrape box website here. It is important that you get the right URL in here because Google considers HTTP and HTTPS different as well as www and not www different. So you could actually have between those combos alone, you could have four different websites. They also consider the slash on the end versus not as a unique one. So if you start combining those things, you can have all kinds of different websites. Proper servers should redirect everything to one. Doesn't always work that way, but it should. But it's important to know that Google may show it with or without the S, with or without the slash, or with or without the www. And so if you put it in one way and Google shows it a different way, the rank tracking may not work the way that you expect it to. So now that I've got it in here, let's enter some keywords. I'm just gonna put in Scrapebox um, and I don't know, Scrapebox SEO, Scrapebox rank tracker, right? So we'll just put it in that. Whatever, you would put obviously put your keywords in here. You can load keywords from a file, save them, clear them. You can, when we're done here, we have options to come back and modify this project or import old projects, which is really useful from the previous Rank Tracker version. So if you had them in the old Rank Tracker, you can import them. You can add this as a new project, which we're about to do. We can update a project as well. And then we can, of course, create a new project, which will erase all this. And I also have the option of using proxies so I can load and clear proxies. I'm not gonna use proxies. You definitely can. Same format as everything else when in Scrapebox, which is just IP port or IP port, username and password with colons in between. And so these are the settings. We can stop when a URL or a domain is found, which is usually a good idea. That way you don't keep going through all the pages and get, taking a chance on burning your IP, your proxy. We want to go as fast as possible with a few queries on Google and being as possible, right? We can check sub pages. So that would be like scrapebox.com forward slash plugins, right? So I can check for those or I can just check for scrapebox.com if I want to uncheck that. I can treat HTTP and HTTPS as the same domain, even though Google doesn't, we can treat it as the same domain. So if you punch it in wrong here, and Google has it without the S, for example, it'll Scrapebox will still pick it up and assume it's the right domain. And a same thing with the www. So basically, even though Google treats it separately, Scrapebox can compensate for that and try to help you out, assuming you leave those on, and they're on by default. 
Now, we can delay after each request. I'm just gonna leave it on the default. Maximum URLs to check up to 500. I'm gonna leave it at 25. Usually, Google's gonna soft cap at less than 500 anyways. They're gonna stop giving you results around 200. Same thing for Bing. So um, it's nice to have the 500 and sometimes that might be true, but most of the time, 200 or less is gonna be where you're gonna be at. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on both Google and Bing just for the sake of this. Now we're gonna add this as a new project. We can see it over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We'll see that project pop up here. We can click on it. And now we have options. We can check the selected project or check all projects. So say I have three projects in here because I have three websites or I have 10 projects because I have 10 clients, whatever. You can check them all or check one. That's a manual option. Again, if we are using the scheduler, we can go ahead and basically set it up to do those on a schedule, right? And we'll talk about that in a minute. Pretty straightforward, it pops our keywords in here. It's gonna give us data about those. Um, these are self-explanatory, what the current rank is, the previous rank, the change, if any, and then the last date it was checked. This is the position, so it'll be an actual list of URLs, like this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? And then the actual URLs, this is just like when you go to Google and do the search, that's what comes up. And then down here we can see the tendency here, so we can do 10, 100, 500, and that changes the graph, and then we can do different, uh, a bar graph or like a line graph, right? I think it's called a line graph. Anyways, you know what I mean, right? And so we can also show a browser. It does use the browser. I would not ch check off this box to show the browser unless you need to. It probably even will give us some pop-up that says don't, because then it's just keep popping stuff up in your face. But all right, so let's check the selected project or there's only one, so just check it, right? It's gonna run in the background, and you can see down here processing, it's even blinking to let you know that it is. It has processed keyword one of three. Now it's probably doing the three second delay. And so we can see that it's currently processing this keyword, and we have the little badge to show us that that keyword is done. So it's just processing through here, it should just take a few seconds. And obviously these keywords are very relevant to uh, my actual website that I put in there, which is just Scrapebox. And so we can see that it's a current rank and then it's checking Bing right now, most likely. Uh, yeah, Bing is processing. So it does Google, and then it does Bing. And so let's let that finish. It'll be done here. I've talked almost the whole way through it. And then we'll just have a look. All right, so I did pause the video for a second just to let it finish. And we can see the ranks by clicking here, right? So the rank in Google and the rank in Bing is there. So if I click a keyword, you can see my list of URLs and then the positions. And then when you click a given keyword, we can see here um, where it is. So it, it'll show you, this is the rank out of 500. So let's say it was rank number 300. This is the rank out of 10, right? And we can see this is the line graph. This is the bar graph. Obviously it's the first time I've run it. So we can't see, it, if there was like 10 days of data here, we would see the 10 days here versus a line graph where it dances around like, like the tiny picture here and show you the rank. I'll give you a disclaimer about rank in a minute. Uh, it's really, really important, but I'll throw it at the end. So anyways, that's how it works. That's the concept you can see. And I'll do some troubleshooting at the end too, right? You can see here the green, it highlights green, anything that matches the domain name, right? So all these were, and then there's some in between, right? And then various things here. And so that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how it works. You can export the projects and that sort of stuff. So let's talk about the scheduler for a minute. And we have troubleshooting to talk about and then a really important disclaimer. So scheduler, really cool. You can enter a name for the task. I'm gonna call it Scrapebox, right? Or Scrapebox daily, because I'm gonna run it daily. I'm gonna start it today. And it's just, this is when I'm recording the video. I'm gonna do it every day or I can do it for every, like check it like every five days, for example, once every five days. I'm gonna pick the project and then I'm gonna export the result as whatever file name I wanna export it, at, right? You gotta click here and then find something and then I'm just gonna stick it in new folder 10,000 here, right? Uh, scrape box daily, right? It's gonna pop it out as an Excel file every day. And then I can, do this if I wanna do all projects instead of one, I can create the task, right? Success has been scheduled. The task run must ensure for, hang on, this is important. Please note, for scheduled tasks to run, you must ensure Scrapebox is running in the background. So you can't close down Scrapebox, you gotta leave it running. You can minimize it, but you can't close it down, right? And I think this uses Windows Task Scheduler as well, at least on Windows. So I don't even know if Ring Tracker is available on Mac, but 
it, it might be. So the task scheduler should be on as well. So let's talk about some troubleshooting. If you're using the scheduling thing and it's not working, then obviously make sure Scrapebox is running in the background and make sure you haven't killed the Windows task scheduler process, which is just a universal process that's part of Windows. Another troubleshooting thing is if you're not getting any rank in here, like if this isn't updating, if I click on a keyword after it's run and this box is empty with no URLs, that means that nothing loaded. So either there was some issue, like your proxy was dead, or your proxy was blocked or your IP was blocked in general. And so then you'd want to edit your projects and go into Scrapebox, for example, and change it from like a delay of three, maybe delay of six or delay of 10, for example, slow it down so your proxies don't get blocked, right? And so that's a really important troubleshooting step to understand. And I'm gonna run this again while I talk for a second, see if it'll give us an updated bar graph. I don't know if it does it, since it's twice in one day. The disclaimer that's really, really important that you need to understand, and I actually wrote some articles on it on Scrapebox FAQ, if you wanna read them, boxfaq.com, right? Um, you can put in rank, and they'll come up, right? Why are my results not showing properly, and why does Rank Tracker show a different result than what I see in a browser or elsewhere? This is really important. Uh, if I go to Google and type in Scrapebox, for example, and just don't do this. So I can see the results are here. Now, Scrapebox is coming up number one, got some YouTube videos, right? Pretty straightforward, but the w I'm not gonna try to be proclaimed to be the world's foremost expert on rank tracking, and I'm not even necessarily going to say this in the most technical way, but I, I wanna say it in a way that makes sense that people can understand it. So let's say it like this, so it kind of makes sense. Let's say there's lots of Google data centers around the world, which there is, right? And let's say that there's a thousand Google data centers around the world. I don't know how many there are, but let's say there's a thousand. In each data center, the rank can be different. The rank can be different for all kinds of reasons. So if I type in scrape box, it's coming up number one. But if I go down here and I change this, so I think you can still do this. Somewhere in the settings in here under Google, I can go and change my results. If I start changing all of this stuff, first of all, past hour, 24 hours a week, that's obviously gonna change it. But you used to be able to change this to do 100 results. I haven't even, I don't even use Google that much. I use ChatGPT nowadays a lot. But let's say you can go in here still and change it under advanced search, for example, and change it to be 100 results. That can change the ranking. So that can literally make certain websites disappear just by changing that. If it's 100 results versus 10. If it is google.com versus google.fr for France, for example, then the rank can vary. And so you can literally have different data centers where the rank is one in one data center and it's three in a different one and it doesn't exist at all in another one, especially if you have weaker websites that don't have a lot of links. So you can literally pull up your browser and it can vary by browser. So this is, for example, Chrome. If I open up Firefox and bring it in here and search it, I can literally get a different result. Now, Scrapebox is gonna show up number one because it's a very old site with lots of strong links, but if you have a new website with weak links, you can literally be number three in Firefox on your computer and number one on Google in Chrome on your computer. Like, literally, I've seen it happen. So Google shows different things in different ranks for all kinds of different reasons. The quantity of results per page, the browser, which is the user agent, the IP address, so you can use a proxy, and you're gonna get results that are gonna vary. Plus, Google's gonna pull up the results based off the geographic location of the proxy. So if you're trying to check results for a website that you want to rank in Canada and use proxies from France, you're gonna get results from France, and the ranking is gonna be skewed. So ideally, you'd want to use proxy IP addresses from the location that you want to check the rank. The point here is simply this. There's 38,000 reasons why Rank Tracker can give you a different result than what you see in your browser. Because the results can literally vary with all kinds of different data centers and browsers and different reasons. So just because it shows up as number three in your browser, when Bob, who's a state away or 10 miles away searches it, it might show up number one, it might not show up at all, or it might show up number 10. So it's important to understand not just what you see, but the biggest red flag is if you're seeing one thing in a browser and Rank Tracker showing you something else, that means your potential client 
uh, customer or your client's customers may be seeing different results than what you see in your browser. So it's really valuable to get a different take on it to make sure that, okay, this is a kind of a weak, weak link profile. I need to make some stronger links so that it ranks better across all data centers or make some more focus in the particular area or the particular engine like .com, .fr, .br, the, the list goes on, right? All the TLDs around the world so that it ranks where I want it to rank at and put some more focus there. So you can go over here and read the article. There's more, there's more reasons why it might not rank, but the big picture here that's really important is technically there's not a wrong answer because Google can show the same thing ranked different positions or not at all. I've literally seen results disappear when you change a user agent or you change something like the results, quantity of results. They just poof, they're gone. They were number three, and now they're not even in the list of the top 100. That's how Google works. So like it, hate it, whatever you want. That's how Google works. And the rank tracker is literally using a browser and going to Google and showing you the results that it sees. But that may or may not match what you see on your computer because Google doesn't display the same thing for everyone. So that's the rank tracker. That's how it works. You can use the scheduler. And it does work with both Google and Bing. Again, this is the Rank Tracker beta that works with the new update. And that is the Rank Tracker. Thanks for watching this Scrapebox video. For more Scrapebox videos, click the subscribe button down below and then click the bell. And then check out these other great Scrapebox videos.